How's it going, Jack Tackers, and welcome back to another video for you guys. Today, I'm going to be doing my review for the third episode of The Walking Dead Season 8, Monsters. So, right off the bat, I just want to say, this was probably my favorite episode of the season so far. Not that the other two were bad, I really enjoyed the other two, um, the premiere in episode 2, I, I really did. Um, but this episode, I just had, like, I felt like it had so much more, I don't want to say substance, but just so much more excitement I guess you could say and resolution if that makes any sense um what I mean by that is the fight between Alexandrian the Alexandrians with Aaron and well Francine's dead now and so is Eric um and Scott and everyone and the saviors at that outpost that's over the stuff between Rick and Morales is over which let me just say let me just touch base on this real quick why would you bring back Morales? You know, I was excited to see him back. And why would you bring back Morales just to kill him off in the next episode? Now, I get it. It fixes plot holes. Because Walking Dead, at least the original show. Fear the Walking Dead, nah. I mean, you're going on to your fourth season and you have a lot of plot holes. Um, which, I mean, they can be resolved. But this fixes one of the major plot holes. Um, bringing back Morales so we know what happened to him. As a matter of fact, they gave him a whole line of dialogue to explain what happened to his family and how he joined the Saviors and all that. So, yeah, it kind of fixes a plot hole, but uh, I hate Daryl, too. I hate Daryl. And I want to just talk about this, too. The relationship with Rick and Daryl this episode just felt off. Um, if, like, because you could tell... Every time, like, there was this savior hiding behind the tree, and it was only one savior. And there was a younger guy, and Rick tries to make things fair. Rick doesn't, like, do stuff, like, you know... When Rick's... When people say Rick will do whatever, um, to stay alive, not true. I really don't think that's true. Because he was gonna let the savior live. He was. So when you... When anyone says Rick will do, uh, will kill anyone and do anything, stuff like that... It's not true, because Rick has a moral code somewhere inside of him. He has a place where he draws a line, and Daryl, after what happened with him in Season 7, he just doesn't care, and I, I hate Daryl, get over it, I hate him. Um, I liked him in the earlier seasons, just get over it, Daryl fans, if you like him, I'm sorry, just, I hate him. Um, yeah, but you could tell, once he killed that savior, Rick was like, what the heck, you could see, he gave him that look. And then when Daryl killed Morales, he was like, did you know who that was? And he's like, yeah, it didn't matter. And Rick's just kind of like, bro, what? Um, yeah, Morales was carrying a gun, but I, Morales was cracking. Morales was cracking. Rick got it in his head, and Mar Morales could have joined them. Like, he was almost there. Almost. Like, a couple more lines, he would have been good, maybe. Uh, you never know. But, yeah. Uh, so, bringing back Morales and just killing him off was a little odd. Um... Also, the other big death this episode was, um, Eric. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty sad, dude. That was pretty sad. Uh, we barely even got to see Aaron and Eric's relationship throughout the, these, like, what, three seasons? Because Eric was introduced in season five. Um, and you, we see that a lot in the comics, but, like, I felt like we didn't get enough of that in, uh, the show. But we really got to see it stand out in this episode. It was really emotional. Um... Yeah, uh, I feel bad for Aaron. Um, they got Gracie. They're bringing her back, the baby. So that's good. Aaron's taking her to the hilltop um, along with everyone else that's there. Jesus and Morgan um, and Tara and Maggie and Edith. They're all there at the hilltop. And Jesus and Morgan brought back the uh, saviors. And Morgan's in the right here. I want to talk about this. Morgan's in the right here. You know, it's just... it. it you gotta kill him, you know, Jesus is too, uh, you know, he's too nice, if that makes any sense, I mean, we already saw that, but yeah, Jesus is just too nice, uh, I love Jesus, it's just too nice, and the fight scene in the woods, that was pretty epic, um, and then let's talk about this end real quick with King Ezekiel and everyone, he kept saying throughout this episode, oh, we're not gonna lose one of our ranks, we're not gonna lose one of our ranks, and everything was so positive, and, you know, they got the upper hand on all the other savior groups, and little outposts there, and they were just acting all positive and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I guess you could say positive. And then at the very end, uh, Ezekiel's like, oh, crap. And, yeah, the saviors are up there on these, like, water towers, I guess. I don't know what you would call them. Um, 
type things, and they're shooting down, and then they kill a bunch of kingdomers, um, like a bunch of people. And you can see all of the uh, kingdom people. What do you call them? I don't know. Kingdomers, I guess. They're all trying to surround King Ezekiel so they don't, so he doesn't get shot. And you could see them getting shot. And I don't know exactly who died, but I think I saw the dude with the red hair die. I think. Um, we know Carol isn't dead. Um, and, yeah, it's, well, like the comics, King Ezekiel loses a lot of people. Almost himself, um, he, he almost loses his own life. Um, so, yeah, I don't know who exactly who died, but I'm sure some people did. Um, yeah, Shiva. Oh, I'm scared about Shiva. Anyway, uh... Out of 10 for this episode, I'd give this a 9 out of 10. I really did enjoy this episode. Um, so yeah, 9 out of 10 for me. Let me know what you guys thought of this episode down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Boo!